Good morning. And welcome to my Throwback Thursday. Let's just refresh my computer. Excellent, got some people joining us, which is lovely. Thank you so much. I'm hoping that you can hear me all, okay? <laughs> Not hearing me all, <laughs> but you can hear me okay, <laughs> dear. Oh, I've packed a parcel this morning. My tape, where I use the tape gun, oh, just little bits of tape always come off. I keep finding them on my fingers and then I can't get them off my fingers. <laughs> because it's really sticky anyway good morning everybody morning patsy morning jane morning vanessa we have sunshine today yeah there's well it's brightish out there at the moment at least it's not raining because it was like november yesterday which was yeah yeah morning linda so i'm hoping that because you're all saying good morning to me that you can hear me okay it is showing me that my microphone is working so i'm hoping that that is okay but if there's any problems um, and i'm very aware this morning um, that we don't have a philippa because she's on her way out thank you for the thumbs up that's brilliant and um somebody else i can't remember now never mind morning pam morning penny hi leslie hi jan So, hi Jill, thanks Jill. Um, yeah, so time for another Throwback Thursday. I do apologise for not doing, when I looked back, how long ago it was since I've done one. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, I had such a couple of weeks with, um, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> uh, when we had Hazel's launch for her Christmas designs, they did very well for them and they reordered. The day of the launch and um, DPD decided to lose the parcel so and it had lots of money in well not money but you know lots of product inside and uh, so it was very frustrating for all of us because I can't afford to lose that sort of money and Paul and Hazel didn't have any stamps to sell so and it's very difficult getting to speak to anybody um and they have to leave it so many days so they can investigate it and everything and it's like so do i buy some more you know what do we do um because a lot of investment goes into it a lot of time and energy and everything doing the designs and getting them all sorted so decided i would get some new ones and paid extra because i wanted them quickly and lo and behold last friday the parcel that has been sitting doing nothing for two weeks was delivered so now we have twice as much stock <laughs> oh. and while all this is going on which okay I know it's not really earth shattering or anything like that but you know it is I am only a small business and I'm working very hard and trying to do my best and what have you and then last Thursday my husband Mervyn who rides his motorbike to work, came out of work, went to get on his bike, and it wasn't there. Two, I won't, two people, <laughs> that's all I'll say, decided they would steal it last Thursday, no, two weeks ago, at 20 past two, we've got it on CCTV footage, the police have got it, they actually stole eight motorbikes that day. So, yeah, it was a bit of a, a week I can tell you anyway I'm sorry I digress I shouldn't really be pouring my heart out to you but you're like friends it's just like talking to friends anyway let's go back and see who else we've got Katie and we've got Debbie oh excellent well done I wish I cleaned my bathroom as well never mind <laughs> I did go shopping beforehand so you know I've done something hi Bev Excellent. Eating your dinner in Australia while you watch us. Fantastic. And we've got Susan from a sunny Cardiff. Fabulous. That must be good after you've had a lot of rain, I think. Um, and we've got Helen 
and Virginia and Joan, the workshop on the 2nd of November. Do you need... Right, Joan, this is a workshop for um, my Australian stockist, which is Jaycraft. Um, and I'm going to have a word. She's actually away at a show at the moment. So I'm going to speak to her and see if we can do something um, together. But I need... I need to come back. That's not a workshop at the moment for everybody. Um, we've done a kit that people in Australia can buy and then they'll be invited to the workshop as part of their kit. So I, I am going to speak to Jeanette and we'll see if we can work something out. But um, I will come back to you on that one because we haven't had a workshop in a while. Um, who else have we got? We've got Yvonne and Pat. Yeah, Debbie, you're right. A problem shared is a problem tarp, definitely. Morning, Debbie. Hi, Anne. Yeah, just it was a little try, and let's just say hi, Sharon. Hi, Sue. Okay, I'm going to forget about that now, though. So, because this is crafting for me is the the therapeutic bit. So this is the bit that that helps me. So I'm going to flip the camera and talk about the cards that I'm going to share with you today. So bear with me and thank you for listening and being kind and everything. Bear with. OK, so I've had a move round in my craft room, so I need to be a bit careful with my camera because before it was on a shelf that was weighted down by lots of stamps, but I have moved my stamps. And it's so nice. They're in a bookcase and they're the whole top shelf of the bookcase. <laughs> it's rather lovely. <laughs> Morning, Elizabeth. Hi, Tracy. Hope you well, love. Okay, sorry, quick slurp of my coffee. Right. Okay, so I'm hoping that that's, that looks like a pretty good view. It always bugs me when the it's not quite straight and then I move it the wrong way. Oh, and then I over move it. I'll just leave it alone, Julie. I do like it to try and be straight though. Okay, and I'm just going to do that a little bit because you don't need to see my tummy, but you do need to see the ink pads. <laughs> I'd much rather you saw the ink pads than my stomach. <laughs> right, okay, so now we've got Tracy, who I know somebody on the design team who could answer questions if there are any, um, but I will try and look and... Um, not put myself under so much pressure. I think Philippa is amazing when she does her live. She's so cool, calm and collected and she doesn't hurry or and it's lovely. I really do enjoy watching her. And so I'm going to try and I'm going to, um, yeah, just chill and relax and there's no rush. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you remember when I made these cards. And if you haven't watched the live, then there is a live that you can watch to make these. I made these using um, the Christmas elements, the new Christmas stamps, some of the wording. And then I showed you how to make the, the stars dimensional using um, hazel star dies and put them onto embossed backgrounds, little linky backgrounds, <coughs> all sorts. Well, this got me thinking. I was like, OK, I think when we were doing it, I was saying... This is great, but these could be men's cards and have to be Christmas. And then I thought, oh, yeah, but you could do lovely things with um, just flower dyes. So <clears throat> I decided I wanted a rainbow background. So I did a couple that had rainbow backgrounds. So with similar sort of this was my interpretation of it. Um, and then I thought, well, I've used I'll mop. What I did was I mopped up. The pinks, yellows and oranges and then I mopped up the blues, purples and greens and so I made four cards. Now I'm not going to make four cards this morning which I know if Donna was here she would be saying four cards would be wonderful but you could do five <laughs> and if you know Donna you'll understand. Morning Cathy. Isn't Philip a great therapy? Her Technique Tuesdays are fabulous. I always learn something and I've been crafting 30 years plus but I always learn something. The stars are lovely, aren't they, Susan? Just really, it's just something really different when you do that little bit of dimension onto them. Brilliant. 
<laughs> you're just like me, Tracy. It's like, got to get on, got to do it quick, quick, quick. And, and Philippa is just so chilled and laid back. <laughs> it's lovely. So much so that I bought my coffee even this morning. I wouldn't normally, well, I do sometimes, but not often. Okay, so I'm going to make this one first of all. And then I think I'm going to do a variation of those three. So I'm going to put them to one side. I will put photographs. I think there are photographs actually, but I will put photographs up afterwards. And once I've done this, I will actually load it up onto YouTube as well, because I think it's much easier to find on YouTube as well. Okay, got a couple more comments, sorry. No worries, Lynn. Have a lovely morning. And oh good evening to Judy from <laughs> oh, I love this from the Julie Hickey sales team in Australia. <laughs> oh you've set up excellent. Wonderful. So anybody who's in Australia, you need to get yourself along to the Craft Alive. And because um, they're going to be doing classes using Julie Hickey Designs as well. It's just fantastic. Oh, that's lovely. Morning, Tricia. No worries. OK, so this is the card I'm going to make. So I'm going to make my background first of all. So I have. Oh, no, I need to. Sorry, I'm going to be good because in case Michelle's watching. Um, this is a five by seven card with a A6 panel, which I cut down slightly. Um, and then I've got odd bits of card as well. I know she likes to know the size of the card, which is very relevant because it can be very off putting and not when you don't know the, the actual size that people are working on. OK, so this is my four by six piece of card and I'm going to make a inky background but I'm going to use a piece of acetate and I use the acetate that comes on the back of the stamps if I'm honest um, and I use that to pick up the ink so that I can get that really splodgy look to it so I don't want it to I want some solid color in the background but I want it to be have those little droplet bits too okay so I'm going to start with I might do it a different way around actually. I'm going to start. That's not right. That's better. Right, so my colours are Wilted Violet, Mermaid Lagoon, Mowed Lawn, Mustard Seed, Ripe Persimmon, and Picked Raspberry. I labelled all my ink pads the other day, the ones I hadn't done, and it's just so much better. Highly recommend doing it. And I, I blended, I cut a little bit of card, stick it over the top, because the colour on the top of the ink pad is not particularly true because it's been printed so I like to do it with my blending tools oh Bev excellent Leonie and you are going to the J craft oh brilliant fabulous okay so I'm going to put some ink down on my mat and I want it on my mat as opposed to my glass mat because on the this is a craft sheet that's on there that comes with the, the glass mat and the ink reacts differently on the craft mat than it does on the glass mat. If you do it on the glass mat, you won't get those little beading effects. Okay, so I'm going to spritz it with some water and I'm going to use my acetate. Hi Ruth, hope you're well, lovely. And I'm just going to pick up some ink. And can you see how you get those lovely splodges now? And so if I touch down onto my card, I'm, I just want to do one little area in the corner. I'm going to get those little bits showing. And in fact, I'm going to do a second piece. Get another piece of card. Because then I can use this for another card. And I've got so much ink left. In fact, I think I could probably get away with doing three. So I'm going to make them slightly different if I can. So this one, I want some little splodges on the top. OK, I can't. Get rid of all the ink because if I do that, I'll have about 15 backgrounds to do. Okay, so I'm going to wipe up my glass mat so that I don't transfer colour where I don't want it to be transferred. And then I'm going to give this a little heat just to dry this off so that when I do my next one, 
the colour's going to lay on the top. If they touch, it will layer rather than blend. okay so we've got a bit of purple on all those bits of cards so next i'm going to do mermaid lagoon again a little bit of ink give it a twist when you put it out because that will get the pigment and the dye color coming out not just the dye because that's what sits on the top and then i'm going to bring this one over here because this is the one that i started with and had the most solid colored ink on it i think i'll do one that's got purples blue and green on it and then i should have done another one okay we'll have, we'll do the oranges and that later so i'm going to come across this one and then have green at the top i think okay so if you come back in and you want any of these little dots you can just touch down very gently with that and you will just get those little dots showing you can go over the top of where you've been before and that will give you dots as well. So clean that. Again, just wipe this up. So you want to make sure that you're leaving enough room. This is the piece that we're going to be using for the, all the colours, so that you can get all those colours onto your piece of card. In fact, if I dry this one, this is the one I'm going to use. And I'm going to block that. I've got a really big bit of water there. Okay, so don't be afraid if you've got too much water on anything, just to blot a little bit off. The acetate just gives you so much control over where the colours go in, how big the blobs are and things like that. Okay, next up is mode lawn. So again, a little bit of a twist when you put it out, a bit of water. And then pick your colour up. And then just touch down. You can keep moving it around. It will pick up what you've got down as well. I really like some of those little, little dots there. So then this is just going to be green on here. And we'll do green at the top of this one. And if you start getting lines, if you just touch with your finger... That will help to take that actual line away because if you do if you pick up the ink like this you're definitely going to get like that line of ink showing so just to try and get rid of that if you just touch down with your finger then that will help too okay so you might need a bit of water now and again just to clean the acetate off because you don't want to transfer especially when we're going from green to yellow Okay, just make sure, whoops, that we've got no ink where I don't want it so that I pick, don't pick up the wrong colour again. I'm going to blast the one that I want to use. And don't forget to dry the back as well because that will help to smooth your card back out again. Okay, so I don't need to dry these two. I can put these two, put those two on my windowsill. 
and they can be drying because I'm going to use those just with the colours that we've got. So next up is mustard seed. Now my mustard seed is a bit of a funny ink and I know lots of people, I think there was a problem in manufacturing with the mustard seed at one stage because my ink pad is a bit strange but that seems to be working quite well so that's good right so then I'm going to have a bit of mustard seed yeah I think I'll do the same go like across this one and then just have splodges on that one I'd like to try and get some smaller dots as well okay so again let's just mop this up the one that i'm doing as my main one the one in the middle this is gonna be like a really nice colorful bright background so that's why i'm making sure i'm adding enough solid bits if you want it to be more wispy you can and i also discovered the other day because I don't do it very often but when I was mopping up with my kitchen roll it was um I was able to take quite a lot of color off so I was, could actually get quite pastel sort of colors it was it was really lovely yeah and Ambev the same thing now, I know there was a lot of people mentioned about mustard seed it, it does look a bit better now I have to say but yeah, it sort of made me avoid it a little bit, and I love mustard seed. I mean, this is just such a lovely bright colour. And you've definitely, if you look at that, you haven't just got yellows, but you've got some really deeper, some lighter tones. And that's because I've got the dye and the pigment to come out. Okay, so next up is ripe persimmon. You obviously don't have to have these colours. These are just my go-to rainbow colours. Okay, so let's pick up. The more water you put with it, the more washed out it's going to be. So do watch the amount of water. I'll probably put too much with this one. If you do do that, you can always go back in and add a bit more ink pad. And then uh, you may need to spritz a little bit more water, but just don't go as heavy handed as you maybe did the first time, like I did. Now, I haven't really got enough. Let's have a little bit more. And let's not give it so much water this time. And so I'll get a stronger colour. when I pop that down it's nice if it blends into the other colors as well I'd like a few big splodges okay right so let's clear this it's often when you're doing things like this I mean I'm making all these backgrounds in one go so it's giving me I'm not just making one card it's given me all these backgrounds that I can save for another time. So although this might seem time consuming, like we're nearly on half an hour and I haven't even made a background yet. <laughs> Maybe I'm being too chilled. Another thing that I learned recently from watching one when I was watching one of Tim's lives, actually, if you heat something when it's on your mat, um, you get a lot of condensation go because the moisture from your card comes out and goes onto the glass mat and just sits there. Um, so it's much better if you pick it up and let the air circulate. Yeah, that's how yours looks. Does your mustard seed look sort of soggy? 
it's actually looking a lot better than it used to. It used to have like an oily mark almost in the centre. It, was, it really was like there's something wrong with this ink pad. Um, but it's it seems to be much better. It's, it's very strange. It only seems to be mustard seed. Right, so next up is picked raspberry. Did I have another question? Morning, Joe. Okay, so picked raspberry, bit of water, pick up my colour, and then I'm going to fill in what's left. I don't mind if the pink goes on to the orange. I don't mind if the pink goes on to the purple. I don't want it going on the green if I can help it. So we'll have a splodge of pink up here. Whoops. And we'll go across the top of this one. And I want a bit more. I wonder if I dry it very quickly. And let's see if I can. I don't know what side it's on now. I think it's that side. I don't really. I think I need a little bit more. Let's have a little bit more. I know it means I'm going to waste some ink, but I want some little dots on it. Like that. Like that. better. Let's do a few little dots here as well. Let's use that bit up. Right, let's clear this up and then that's all my ink in. That one can go on the windowsill. That one can go on the windowsill. Let's pick this up and let's give this a blast. I've got a big blob of pink just there. There we go. Okay, so that is my um, background, which nothing else happens to that. So that just goes on my card um, as a background. So I'm actually going to put that on now and put it underneath my die cutting machine so it can go flat while we're doing everything else. So I'm just gonna, and I've done this directly onto my card. Quite often I um, raise my backgrounds up, but I'm gonna raise my tag up and I've got the dimensions of the flowers as well. So I wanted this to be flat. Oh, I didn't trim it down. Okay, so if you want it a little bit smaller, I could, don't mind this border actually, but if you want it to be, have a bit more white around the edge, then trim your piece of card down before you put it onto your card blank. Now we need to get that glue to stick around those edges. Once that is done, that is fine. You can't beat rainbow colours, can you? Do you know what? If ever I don't know what to do, if I do it with rainbow colours, everybody loves it. Okay, so bear with me. I'm just going to put this underneath I put the card on my worktop then I put the switch plates and then I put my switch on the top of it um, what glue do you use does it cause the buckling being wet glue no it doesn't this is I refill the bottles bear with me so this is pink frog and it's EVA rather than PVA. Don't really know what. Oh, it's free of plastic, plasticizers, whether that's the EVA. 
I don't know, but it's a fabulous glue. Um, I decant it into the fine tip glue bottle. I've got a yellow one and a blue one. This is much finer. Don't use it that often. Um, prefer this one. And it works really nicely with my hands because I do suffer with my hands now. Um, so, yeah, would highly recommend the Pink Frog. Um, I don't know. Where are you, Elizabeth? Are you in the UK? Because uh, if you are, then lots of the UK stockists would have it. Um, so, yeah, and it's it's a really nice bottle. It's easy to squeeze. So my go to. Right. OK, so next. So I created I loved the tag that I had with the Christmas elements, but I don't have one that's a birthday one. Very remiss of me. So I thought I would use my birthday, big birthday background stamp and create my own. So got the stamp. Get my press. A bit of acetate away. Okay. So put my stamp down into the corner. Works well to have it up the right way. Now, one thing I usually do with my stamps, and I haven't done it on this one, and so I'm going to do it now. I like to put some sharpie on the top so i know which way up it is because quite often if you're stamping something say you're using the stamp and i'm going to do it on the next card to create a bit of a background i want to know it's up the right way so it's a good idea to put a blob of sharpie pen i should probably have let it dry <laughs> but never mind and i'm going to make a tag out of this so it doesn't matter where it is I'm going to ink my stamp up and I'm going to do it black. And I only need to worry about the middle part really of my stamp for inking. I can make sure that my bit of paper is going to be covered. Probably easier just doing the whole thing and then just clean my misty. But I've only got one go at this because it's not the piece of card isn't held down. So perfect, don't matter about the bottom, I can cut my tag out of that easily. So that was what I used to make my tag. Clean my stamp, because I always clean my stamps before I put them away. I'm mentioning any names, <laughs> especially as I don't think she's here to defend herself, which wouldn't be fair. Okay, so. Let's see. OK, let me go back. Um, right, so that was it in Northern Ireland. OK, so you should be able to get the glue from the regular stockist. Not sure if Hazel still has. Hazel did have the precision bottles. I'm not sure. Um, don't think any other glue lives up to Pink Frog. Yep, I quite agree. Where did you get the small glue applicator from? OK, so the, the yellow and blue one are sold as a pair. So they come, you get both of them. Right, OK, so you get both of the glue bottles together. <laughs> this is really hard. <laughs> clean stamps, clean hands. Mm. Oh, right. OK. Oh, I didn't know that, Patsy. OK, I will speak to Hazel afterwards and see if she has them and I will put a post up about it. OK, so while I'm on here, I'm also going to stamp out my sentiment, which I took. I have my sentiments when when I get a set of stamps, I can't remember where there's a lovely happy birthday or where there was a certain word in stamp that I really liked. So at one stage, I took all my wording stamps out of my um, stamp sets, just had the florals together 
and then I created a book like Hazel does um, and I've got my birthday sentiments in here I've got the dictionary definitions I've got my old circle ones I've got some thinking of you with the dies and my you die as well um, I did mean to do it for all the other sentiments like friendship ones and things like that but I got as far as the birthday ones this was actually an idea that Wendy um, Vanessa said to me and I thought it was such a good idea um, I did it she hasn't done it but I did <laughs> oh, I don't think she has <laughs> okay so I'm going to pop that down and I'm going to do it all as one sentiment and then I will chop it up so I've got a nice long thin strip right my stamp is dirty because it's I can feel it so if you get your stamps and they're not sticking anymore if you downstairs I would do this and I would put it in the sink and wash it wash it with soapy water and leave it flat side up so the design side down to air dry and it will make it sticky again now what I've just done is I've put some water on my cloth and I've wiped it and now I know that this is going to stick because I can feel it sticky again why it does that I have no idea but I'm not going to question it because it does work and I just think it's, you know, if they lose their stick, give them a bath and they're like new again. I scrub them with a scrubbing brush and then leave them to air dry. So I've used the sentiment. I think this was out of um, my sunflower one that went over the edge. But it says wishing you the happiest of days, which I just thought was a lovely sentiment. So I've got those two elements. I just need my flowers now. Let's clean this. Right, I just saw all my word stamps are now in one, but I think it's such a good idea because you know you want the sentiment, but you don't know that it was in, I don't know, Sweet Meadow Collection or whatever. Even I don't know that. So, yeah, I must actually go through the rest of them because I know that I've got lovely sentiments, little sentiments in sets that would just be really handy to have access to all the time. So I will do that. OK, so this time, instead of using foil card, I thought, oh, wouldn't they look lovely glittered? And don't they look lovely glittered? So I have used from my Sweet Meadow collection, from my Beautiful Blooms die set, I've used my favourite daisy. I love this one. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to cut one more glitter daisy out. So bear with me while I cut this out. And I will bring my card back that's been sitting underneath my plates. Okay, so my card that's come out from underneath my plates, nice and flat, might need a little bit longer, but it's much flatter than it was. Pop the middles of the petals out. I've lost some of them along the way, never mind. They would actually do for another card if you wanted. Then I need a pokey tool. There it is. Okay, so using the little release bits on the front I just give them all a little go and then you can slide your pokey tool under just to get it started because remember it's really delicate but because it's glitter card it does hold up really well just pop that back now that another thing that I do I actually marked where my dies go together so that not only can I put them away but when I want to do them with the background I know how to find the, the right petal which goes together so that's another a good tip to do and you only have to do it once and then it's all there and ready okay so I'm going to cut my tag now so from this I'm going to 
Right, I've got one straight edge. Let's create another straight edge. I would do it about five centimetres in width. I will trim off so I've got word in down to the bottom. I would say that's a pretty all right size. Get rid of the rubbish. Okay, so then, whoops, then what I do is I put it on my mat and I find a halfway point. So I know that those two lines and then this is the halfway come down a little bit and I know where I need to put my hole. Then for the top of the tag, I like to have about a centimetre and a half at the top. So one and a half squares and then maybe come down to two squares. And then you can actually it's probably easy to do it with scissors. You can do it in the guillotine, but just go from point to point. The longer the pair of scissors you've got, the better, because you'll get a straighter edge. But that was OK. And then I need my hole punch. So then I'm just going to make a hole in my tag. I don't even need to make a hole because I haven't put any ribbon in or anything. But to me, it's not really a tag if it doesn't have a hole. Oops, and you're much better to do this on a craft mat, but because I haven't got one, but like a green self-sealing mat, I do it on my bit of tape. <laughs> it doesn't move then, but that's great. Okay, so I'm going to go around the edge of my tag, and I like to do this with some black. Now I have a sponge. Oh, I do somewhere. That looks like a black one. Yep. So there might be enough ink on here. Yeah, there is. Look, I just want to give it a bit of an edge so it's going to stand out when I put it down onto my coloured background. Um, I This is black soot that is on here. There we go. Perfect. OK, so now I'm going to cut my happiest of days down and then we can start putting our card together so I'm going to line up the bottom of my letters so it looks equal trim it down and then same this side and then I'm going to do I don't know if you can see this hang on let me move those out of the way so I can come back up a little bit. So I'm going to trim the bottom of my word. So this is all rubbish. Keep that a bit. Then I'm going to cut it at happiest of days. So then I'm going to do happiest. So I'm cutting all the words. There's enough of a gap in between each one to trim them down, which is great. Get rid of the one I don't want. Make sure I don't throw away. So wishing you the happiest of days. Okay, so I need a little bit of ink around each of my words and this is just ink that is on my sponges so wishing I've got a bit of pink I might need to yeah I might need a bit of pink I think I left yellow out of this out of there because there wasn't enough words so wishing you and then a bit of green Mm. That looks like a bit of green. Let's just make sure. <laughs> yep, I love mode lawn. Wishing you the a bit of blue. No, need a bit of blue. 
in fact i love all these i love all the colors i've actually been having real fun um, doing that workshop for Jeanette and coming up with different color combos so i've actually got oh let's see my purple's gone a bit funny that is a little bit funny okay i need to go back and read all the comments in a minute yeah so i've been using different i've got different color combos to share with them um yeah and it's just been really good fun making different colors and using colors trying to think of colors that you wouldn't normally put together okay so let me bear with you have all your words in one box <laughs> oh bless you yvonne the daisy is lovely isn't it yeah i think it's a great little winter day project actually thank you Gillian. i love these flowers too okay so let's start putting it all together so i am totally converted with cardboard instead of foam pads i have to tell you it is so easy to do and it is so nice because i can just chop it up i had i was very lucky i had some flowers two lots of flowers actually sent to me during my horrible time of the last few weeks and so the big boxes that they came in i've trimmed down and i'm now using on my cards and i just think that's fabulous but it really gives lovely stability to your card it is honestly if you haven't tried using cardboard yet give it a go and the pizza boxes i found were the best cardboard this from the flower boxes is fine um it's maybe a little bit more dimensional than the pizza it's a bit th thicker cardboard than the pizza box the pizza box was a lovely weight so i can highly recommend cutting down pizza boxes <laughs> just have to have pizzas for dinner <laughs> are the are the inks oxides yes they are but they don't need to be oxides um any water-based ink pads that you have if you've got distressed inks you will do it just as beautifully all i will say is that distressed inks and distressed oxides are just different in colors so your dis if it's distressed inks then quite a lot brighter than the distressed oxides because the distressed oxides have the chalkiness in them um, but they both would work perfectly any any um water-based ink pads you can do it with any water-based so if you've got cheapies um i'm trying i don't know any others because i've got um the distressed oxides i know hazel's talking about she wants uh, to go a set of distressed inks again i'm going to put it over my the hole in my t oh do i no i don't want to doesn't matter that the cardboard's showing i don't mind i just love the cardboard it does make such a difference to the finish on your card it's got such stability to it when i put a panel on and i put the panels on with cardboard now the difference in the feeling of the card is incredible it really is so i like to put these on at different angles i want it to be overhanging my background so you've got that interest i'm just literally curling the petals up a little bit i don't know why really because it's going to go in an envelope but it's fine and then i like to just entwine them maybe have them underneath each other a little bit overhanging the tag a little bit just just bringing that interest in again overhanging the edge of the background it's just all drawing your eye in so now I'm going to cut a nice actually pretty good doing. you need to watch when you're cutting thin strips how you cut because of the corrugatedness of the cardboard so this runs that way so I want to cut across it so that it keeps its dimension if I cut the other way you would lose it because it's 
the co it's running down the corrugatedness of the cardboard. I hope that makes sense. Right, so got wishing, and that'll go on happiest. So then I need two little bits and that bit. Okay, so just a bit of glue. Put your cardboard on. Obviously, make sure you've cut it thin enough and that you don't have any showing on the other side. Yeah, it's a good idea. I, I did start off using the cardboard for bigger pieces. And again, like you say, I've got those. I do love those little thin foam pads from I think they were hunky dories got that around the wrong way let's put that around that way make sure it's not showing yeah I do I do really like those I must admit but even cutting it down for those little words that's fine and I spent I don't know half an hour cutting cardboard up the other day and I've got a lovely big pile of it now whoops I cut it all down mainly to sort of a six in size I'm going to tuck this under my first days and I'm overhanging my tag as well so wishing you nice to offset your words add a bit of interest so this is slightly different to the first one but that's fine wishing you the whoops and then happiest again tuck it underneath part of your petal and then of days whoops okay so then all i did was a little bit of glitter glue in the centers and around the edge of my card I'm not going to do that because it takes a little while to dry and everything and I don't want to spoil it and I don't think you actually need the glitter when you've got the glitter glue but yeah so just another I really like that it just gives you a different look with the glitter card as opposed to the glitter glue I'm just going to show you this is my box of cardboard I cut it all down it's all nice and neat and ready to go so i just yeah just spent 20 minutes or half an hour something like that right so what do i do with my cards here right so let's decide what i'm going to do so i'm going to do a mixture i really like this i think i'm going to use the the birthday die and i wanted to do a little bit of stamping like i've done in the background here and I think I've used some of the Sweet Meadow stamps as well. I did. So we'll do a version of, I'm not going to do a tag again. We'll do a version of these two. So we'll pop that to one side. And I think I will do, I'm going to use, I really like that. Yeah, let's, this is one of them. All right, so these are the four other ones that I've got. That we made this morning that were drying on the windowsill so how lovely is that so like five cards but well, i think this one we'll use that one okay so i'm going to start in my stamping press and i'm probably going to make another five by seven card just because i really like five by seven cards i'm going to bring back my big birthday one this stamp set, this book that I put together, I did it so that I've got my message banner die and stamps, dictionary definitions, the birth, happy and birthday die and the big background. This is another sentiment one, really. So I put in here the die, my message banner die on a bit of magnetic sheet. And then I've got my vertical sentiments and the new birthday sentiments. And then I've got the plain banners that you can stamp and then put all the messages in 
and then I've got the stitched banners with all the messages and then I've got my dictionary definitions with my happy birthday die as well and then I've got my background one and then in this one I've got sweet sentiments as well which I love I love these so yeah just thought I would share that with you okay so I'm going to make this predominantly pink I think so I'm not going to put my stamp in the press this time I'm going to have it up the right way because now I know that that purple splodge is up the right way I'm going to ink it up but not completely and then I'm going to use it with my fingers I'm going to try and get it straight because that does bother me so now I've got some ink at the top there move it down a bit let's put a little bit more ink on then I can pick it back up again so do take your time just to make sure that you've got this straight on your card so I'm using the bottom of my card and then as you touch down with your fingers that will give you some of the stamping so that I'm fine with that that's perfect so let's bring my water bottle spritz that and clean that off I could have kept going on my other backgrounds maybe and decorated them so they were ready but I might do something different with them so put my word in back in then I'm going to take some of my sweet meadow so I'm going to use the little one I love this little I love that the little dandelion one so let's put that on a block and so I'm going to keep it in my stamping press but I'm going to use it on a block do make sure you tap all over because the inks pads tend to have a bit of a dip in them and then I'm going to stamp on and off and I'm going to stamp oh, I'm going to keep it pink no I'm not no I'm going to bring in the orange as well so let's clean that off I really like the fact that you've got a little bit of mustard seed in here so let's make sure we get a mustard seed flower but I'm keeping it in the area where that inking is so where it's yellow inked I've got the yellow flower I need a bit of water on there and then a little bit of orange and we'll have on there and we'll put one down here where it's white so you will see it more okay so I'm happy with that just got some splodges in the background oh no I hope my phone isn't about to die I didn't think about that I should maybe plug it in because I can't see now <laughs> never mind let's hope it doesn't <laughs> no problem Kathy that's the whole fun of it and Pam no no worries no worries that's the whole point you can come back whenever you want okay so I have my background and I'm going to bring elements of that in now so I want a happy birthday to go across it I'm going to cut it down a little fraction before I forget so I'm going to cut a bit off of there and a bit off of there so now I know it's smaller ready to go on my card so I won't forget and I think I'm going to cut my birthday so I'm going to cut birthday out of there Hmm. and what else can I do I could do those little leaves couldn't I so in the lovely leaves I don't think I'll get hmm. 
I won't get that out as well, will I? So let's do these two leaves. I love these as well. Look, I'll get those. Right, so I'm going to do those. Okay. So bear with me while I just die cut these. Plenty of room. It's not very easy with the because you can't stick it down on the glitter card. Try that way round. Right. Let's hope this works and it doesn't move because this is the last bit of silver. Oh, just chopped the bottom off my birthday. Oh, so annoying. Look at that. Now let's see if it notices. Sometimes not going to do me poke at all. There you go. Pop that out. Yeah, it does notice. How annoying. Right, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually just going to cut the Y. I'm just going to cut the bottom of the Y off and see if I can tuck it behind. That's what I need to do. Right, bear with me. Let's see if we can repair this because it would be a good thing to show you. Okay, so all I want is the bottom part of the Y. So let me get my scissors. Okay, so we literally, I've got to stick some, it's got to stick it onto something. And it's not going to be easy because it's glitter card, but I'm going to stick it so that you get the bottom part and you won't even know. Right, so that's fine. Not going to write that off because <laughs> I'm too tight with my glitter card. It's my last bit of silver. Okay, going to take all the bits out the middle and then use the little release holes. Look at that. Oh, I've forgotten how lovely these are. Isn't it funny how you don't use things for a while and then it's like, oh, I just remembered how beautiful they are. Okay, let's get rid of all of this. Obviously, you could keep those bits and do paper piecing if you want to. Okay, so I'm going to go for another five by seven card so this is 24 by 18 sorry Jan didn't see that you're going no worries right so this is 24 by 18 so I'm going to score at 12 which will give me a card blank and this will fit into a five by seven envelope which I know is weird because I've given you centimeters <clears throat> okay, so Patsy is saying that Hazel still has the wet glue.
yes definitely give it a go linda definitely it gives you so much more control when you're doing it okay so i'm going to put a little bit of ink yeah i think i am i'm going to put a bit of pink actually do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to do pink down to there and pink across the top and pink down to the orange and then i'm going to change to an orange ink pad on the orange bit and i'm going to get a yellow sponge and do yellow on the yellow bit there we go so i have a multicolored edge to my card now i'm going to pop this down onto my card and i'm going to do it directly onto it because again actually i might do the birthday flat because i've got to mend it as well haven't i oh i've just thought of a good way of mending it an easy way to mend it so that i can still give it dimension so we will still lift it up just let that glue just grab around the edges i be careful because i've just realized my mustard seed is still wet okay so if i grab a bit of scrap card and i die cut another birthday then i can stick the glitter card to this one making it more dimensional more like an embellishment and then i'll be able to mend it much easier so let's just cut that okay so take that the waste away always pop those bits out make sure it's die cut properly and then just with a couple of the release holes especially on the more delicate bits so definitely like around the, the y and the i so just give a little help in hand okay because you don't want it to misshape too badly right let's get rid of all the let's move my card let's get rid of this so it's a nice clean environment to work in okay so let's stick my bottom of my y on first make sure you've got that really well lined up let's bring it up and have a look so really well over the top then i'm going to put more glue down suppose what i could have done was i could have almost like mitered it you know like you do a mitre corner so you get because i'm going to have two layers and one layer and so maybe i chop that bottom bit off if i chop it there so i'm just going to cut it won't show because it's going on top but now it's not so bulky all over so now line all this up beautifully so start in one place and get that stuck down but by adding it onto card you're also making it so much easier to add to your card because it's got some dimension and some stability to it now okay so we're going to put birthday across there we're going to actually i'm going to bring it down we're going to have the leaves i think i'll have the leaves like that on it and then I'm going to put the happy over where the leaves go. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to pop this down. So I'm going to glue this using the dimension of the cardstock. I'm not going to add any more height to it. I could have done it with foam pads. 
the skinny ones if I wanted to but I'm going to do that directly onto my card making sure I made sure that that fits okay and then if I could add a bit of dimension to these yep so then I'm going to do some glue on the bottom of my stem I've just bent that a little bit with my fingers give it a little bit of dimension do the same with this one curl that end up but give that because it's glitter card as well it, it's really easy to manipulate and it does actually hold its shape quite well we offset that and then the one that I love to use for the happy which is what I used on this one is I like to use my happy birthday which was from my mandala collection let's move all these out of the way so I like to use this the happy out of here so I'm going to show you a trick of how to put the whites back in which makes it really easy so we need a scrap of card so I keep any bits I cut off little pieces like this I keep now just makes it really easy for sentiments and things so you're going to ink it up I'll we'll do this in black so it's got some real impact make sure it's nicely inked I'm sorry I've missed all the comments I will go back and read them once I've stamped this out so you get a really lovely inking I'm more ha worried about the, the happy the little birthdays a little bit missing at the end but that's fine I'm not going to use that bit so then what I'm going to do clean my stamp and put it away because it's one of my favorites it gets used often and then I'm going to trim this down this is where the clever bit comes in so I'm going to trim off no, trim it down first sorry trim your the size of your sentiment down so I want it so that it's quite close to the black so let's see if that's close enough yep so I've lined it up with the top of my the letters that are showing so you can just see the the tips of the letters And then when you trim that down, you've got a white border. It's a bit bigger. Okay, we can sort that. So I'm going to trim off the word birthday. I need to trim this down a little bit because that's a bit more white on this side. Okay, so now when I trim it down, trim that word so you've got even border. Then with the bit that you've got left trim another piece doesn't have to be a big piece it can be a small piece it can be smaller than what I've done but just to make it easy to see let's get rid of that so then put glue on this bit and glue your sentiment together with the same border because you know the piece of card is the right depth because it was the scrap from the end and now when I put that down on my card it's got a lovely border around it and it matches so then I can cut a piece Cut a piece of cardboard and the glue. I think that might be too big. Oh, it is. Gosh, I'm not very good at eyeing things up. Let's snip a bit off of there as well. Right, so glue. Glue that to the back of your card, your sentiment. And then a bit of glue on there. Get rid of that. 
oh, bring the card back in and then I'm going to place that. Now I need to make sure that it's on nice and straight. Oh, how pretty is that? There we go. I can pop my glue away. So that's my mashup of those two, which again, just a different idea. Each time you change it slightly, you just add in just more and more ideas all the time. So yeah. So that was my throwback Thursday, and that was looking at my beautiful blooms, my lovely leaves, my birthday sentiment, uh, birthday background, and also the sentiment that I had. So just a little idea to maybe go back through your sentiments and pull them out and have the sentiments um, booklet like I did. I need to do another one, definitely. In fact, I don't think I can today. Right, let me have a little look back. Okay, right. So we've got some questions about the glue. Sorry if I'm confused. I recently got a new precision boss and the one. Oh, okay. So they may have changed the colours of the lids. Okay, so when I said it was yellow and blue, right, okay. Yeah, I just thought I I haven't got any more silver card to cut it out. So I'm going to be frugal. Can you tell? Would you be able to, I mean, all right, ever so slightly because it's really hard. I would have to put some more glue on there and then put something heavy on it and leave it to dry. But really, I think that's fine. I'd be well happy with that. Oh, excellent. I'm glad about that, Joe. Get crafting, definitely. It's so good for you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Yvonne. Where else have we got to? I take it that's probably Tracy because it's not me saying it was fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Virginia. Thank you, Bev. Good. I'm glad you've got some new ideas. Yeah, and I think it's important to see how you sort problems and things out. I, I wouldn't want to throw all that away just for that little tiny bit across the bottom that was missing, you know. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks, everybody. Well, let me just flip the camera a minute. And make sure I do the right button. Oh, oh. my arm and my desk, my chair's a bit high. <laughs> with my desk okay so i just wanted to say thank you very much for joining me um don't forget i will put the video up on youtube so it just makes it much much easier to find and they are under a playlist for throwback thursday um i hope you enjoyed it i know i did it's always good to have a little craft um love seeing the bright colors as well absolutely you can't beat a rainbow card <laughs> <laughs> ever stuck just do a rainbow um and i will be back but it won't be next thursday um for a, th a throwback thursday but i will be back soon i'm going to do a live using hazel's stamps as well and oh has has any of you seen marion's video i just love that branch card that she did and i was thinking it's for all year it's not just for christmas that that she's done a pine branch in different oh go and watch it um it's not on my facebook um it's not my youtube channel it's on hers but i did put the link on the julie hicker designs page because it's fabulous absolutely beautiful cards so i will be back soon and uh we'll have some more lives for you and i know that tracy's got one planned for i think it's is it monday tracy i don't know if you're still here love um but yes she's got amazing one planned for you with the Christmas planner. I don't want to switch it off because if I do, I won't be able to see. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me and we will be back soon. Always check the Judy Hickey Designs page or the um, Crafty Friends page. They'll always be posted in there as well. Have a lovely rest of the day and I will see you all again soon. Take care. Bye bye.